subject that has to do with security cameras and trail cams something that I think is a pretty good thing I ran across uh, I've got a couple of these particular security cameras around my house um, they're pretty nice I'm able to see if anyone comes up or whatnot this is the model uh, DCS 930L so I got these for forty dollars a piece roughly maybe a couple dollars less on Amazon and I've used a couple of these around the house and then I can see if the neighbor's dog's trying to get into my chickens or whatever and uh, what I like about this is it will take pictures when it detects motion and it'll send those pictures to me through email and I get those pictures and I can see what happened so if one of the neighbor's dogs was digging around the chicken coop I've got a picture of him and I call the neighbor and say, hey, come over here and cover up the hole that your dog dug up. Um, <clears throat> another thing that I like about this camera is I can uh, get on the web from anywhere through even my Android phone and with the Android phone I can look at live video feed that uh, comes through this, this particular camera. What I don't like about it is it'll only work off of a wired Ethernet connection or Wi-Fi. Um, it, uh, it, so if, if you don't have a Wi-Fi signal or a wired Ethernet connection, it's not worth anything to use as a remote camera for a trail cam or anything like that. It doesn't even have a memory card in it. They do have these cameras that have memory cards in them, but they cost a lot more, and it just, I'm on a budget. I'm a cheap man, and I do things by cheap means, and that's the reason you're subscribed to me, so that we can share these really cool ideas. Um, it doesn't have two-way communication. If I want to speak to someone that I see, they can't hear me. So I can hear them, but they can't hear me. I can holler all I want, and there's no speaker here. So, um, I was in Kroger City Market back in late December, and I was browsing around in there. I always use their fuel points cards to get my diesel cheaper for my truck, and I happened to be in there looking at their gift cards. They were double points, which is the usual deal, but they did have this really cool little Android phone, and this was on sale for $9.99. And uh, I bought one and played around with it a little bit, and I ended up liking it so well, I now have five or six of these things. And uh, they work really well. So uh, I want to kind of share some of my thoughts with you about these, because I was thinking that an Android phone can do quite a few things. And I bought one, and uh, this is called the Cool Pad Arise. Uh, it's an off-brand phone, but it has plenty of memory to do the things that I'm talking about doing for this application. So twenty or ten dollars, as opposed to forty dollars, and I'll show you how you can do all that. With this phone, you can still do real-time live video feed using Skype, and you can also do motion detection through a small app that I found at the Play Store, and uh, it will detect motion in its field of view and, and email those to you. So it essentially will do everything that this thing will do, but using Skype as your live video feed, I can see someone through this camera and I can speak and they will hear me. Although they can't see me because my picture is going to be on the other side of the phone. only has one camera on the back, not the front. But they can hear me talk to them, I can hear them, and I can have a conversation. So if, if someone comes up on my front porch and I see that then I can actually visit with them if I'm out of town or whatever. Another thing that makes the Android phone really nice is if I'm going to use it on Wi-Fi like I do around the house I don't have to purchase cell service with this. This works through iWireless which uses the Sprint Towers and uh, for as little as ten dollars a month I can actually um, use the cell signal, have it take pictures and email these to me over the cell waves. So if I've got a place where there's cell service at that's remote, then I can use the data uh, functionality of this 
and email myself pictures from anywhere. Anywhere I've got a cell signal. It's great. So depending on the functionality that you want, there's two separate apps that perform these functions. One of them is Skype and that allows you to utilize this Android phone as a security camera. The other app that allows you to take snapshots of detected movement is called Cloud Spy Cam. This app not only has the ability to take snapshots of detected motion in the area, it can also send live video feed to an FTP video server. I won't cover that because it's a little bit complicated, but I will cover how you can, say, take a snapshot every 24 hours of, say, your stock tank where you've got cows out uh, and see what the water level is in the stock tank. You could have it take a snapshot of that, send it to you once every 24 hours, or you could have it detect movement and take a picture of that. So it's pretty functional in that way. So we're going to do a quick review of the two apps. First, we're going to talk about Skype. Download it from the web, uh, start it up, and then set up an account just for that phone. I use my same email address for all the phones, but I've given them all different Skype names and Skype allows you to do that. <clears throat> so in my regular Android phone I've got my Skype account that my friends and everyone else can call me on and I get the video feed back and forth and then I've got these little cool pads that I also have Skype installed on each of these and then these phones uh, simply are set to auto answer. We'll go over all that. So anyway you start up Skype and then you set up an account just for that phone and you give it a meaningful name to remember. So like um, my phone that looks at my charging meters, I call it charging meters. And that means something to me. I see that name and I know that's what I'm going to dial into. So you set the phone to auto answer in its uh, settings. And then you can call it using Skype anytime you want to see what's happening in the area. I set all of mine to private. In other words, they'll only answer phones that are in their contact list. So for my Android phone, I call the phone, tell it I want to uh, set it up as a contact. Then I go to that phone and I say, okay, you're a good contact. And then I can call it anytime from that point. I also had to turn off auto update on all my installed apps to prevent them from updating. I had issues that any time an app updated automatically, the phone would stop auto-answering my Skype calls. So to disable auto-update, I went into Play Store, then to My Apps, then I had to go to each app individually, then bring up the menu for that app, and then simply uncheck the auto-update click box. Then you go back and do that for each app that's installed on the, the little cool pad phone. Then when you go to check your phone out in the trail or the remote area or wherever, then you can just take it and go in and, and uh, it'll already have that it's got these updates available. Then you can update everything at that time. Okay, now let's look at the Cloud Spy Cam app. This app can be a little complicated to set up, so I'm only going to cover how to set it up for motion detection and for timed pictures. <clears throat> When you start the app, it comes up kind of sideways. It can look pretty overwhelming immediately. Uh, so we'll start with the features of the app that I personally find useful. So this app can take photos at specific intervals and that uses the least amount of power. It'll take photos on motion detection which uses more power. So photos from steps one and two can be stored and retrieved later. Uh, they can be emailed to any email address or they can be stored in a Picasa or Dropbox account if you have Wi-Fi or cell service available. Streaming video to PC and other Androids I'm not going to cover in this video because it's just too complicated. Um, it can be remotely controlled when it takes a photo if it's connected to Wi-Fi or cell service. Also I'm not going to cover that but it is a nice feature. I've tried it and it works. Say for instance um, if, uh, if it's a certain time of day and you just want to see if it's cloudy back home where you live, you can send it a command to take a picture and email it to you, and you can do that through the commands. Uh, but like I said, I'm not going to cover that here. It can also email its battery status along with the photos. I do check that box uh, because if for whatever reason its power source fails and I get a picture, it'll show usually the battery's 100%. If it's below that, then I, need to, I know I need to get out there and check it and make sure it's not unplugged or the battery that I've got it plugged into to keep it charged isn't dead, uh, things like that. 
So on your uh, Cloud Spy Cam app, you'll download the demo app first from the App Store and play around with it until you're convinced it'll work for you. The only limitation is that it will only run for about an hour and then it shuts off. But that's plenty of time to decide if it's going to meet your needs and it'll do what you think it does. And you're not just taking my word for it and spending three bucks and then getting mad at me because you lost three dollars. If you decide it is the app for you, then you can purchase it for $2.99. I purchase it and I run it on all six phones and I only had to purchase it that one time. So it's like 50 cents per phone for me. The only way that you can use this with the cell phone is or as a standalone device, in other words, not having it plugged into a charger constantly, is by having it set to take photos by time interval or by remote command. Any other means like live video streaming or motion detection require a lot more power and the battery in the phone's not going to last long enough to, to last any more than just a few hours. So I definitely recommend having it plugged into a power source. Um, uh, but this can be done using a small 12 volt battery at your remote location. You can go to the dollar store, get a 12 volt USB charger uh, that plugs into a cigarette lighter. Then you can plug your charge cable into that and that will keep your phone charged. And then you can go out there once a week or whatever and swap it out with a charged battery that's a 12 volt lawnmower battery or whatever. Um, if there's no cell service or Wi-Fi at your remote location, the only chance or the only choice you have is to store your photos internally or use a micro SD card that's inserted into the SD slot in the phone. You won't be aware that anything has occurred until you physically go to the phone and check for pictures. Now for setup instructions. First you want to start the Cloud Spy Cam app and you'll see a screen that looks like this and I'm going to get you a lot bigger uh, picture on it, but um, you'll start up that app, and you'll scroll down to Snapshot, and then you click the wrench icon. Scroll down to Sleep Interval, and click that. This is in milliseconds, so if you want a photo every 24 hours, you'll enter 86,400,000. So it'll be 864 followed by five zeros for every 24 hours. Or you can say every... 3,600,000 milliseconds. That'll give you a photo every hour. <clears throat> then you'll click OK once you've got the number in that you want. If you want to store the photos in the phone memory, you're done configuring. There's nothing else to do. If you want to use the SD card memory, scroll down to External Storage and click. Click External Storage to select photos to SD card. Clip Keep External Images if you want to stop taking photos if the SD card gets full, or leave it unchecked if you want it to remove old photos to make room for new ones if the card gets full. Now you're done configuring. Hit the back key to return to the previous menu. If you want photos emailed, then scroll down to Email and click. Click the username. Enter the username of the email account you're going to use to send these emails from. Click OK. Then click Password, and then here you'll enter the password to that email account, and then you'll click OK. Click Email To Address, and then this is the email address you want to send the photos to, and then you'll click OK. Click Email From Address, and then you're going to click the email address you're actually sending these emails from, and then you'll click OK. Then you click SMTP Auth Host and enter your email SMTP host name. For Gmail, it's smtp.gmail.com. Click OK. Click SMTP auth port. Then you'll enter the port number for your SMTP server. For Gmail, this port number is 465. Click OK. Click device ID, and then you'll enter a name that means something to you for this particular camera, like you do in Skype. And this one I would put something like Trail Cam 3. Then you click OK. Click Add Timestamp to Email. This will also send you the date and time the photo was taken down to the millisecond. Click the Test Email button and check your email to see if you got an email from your phone. If you didn't, then go back and verify all of your settings. Scroll up to the top and then click the Email checkbox. This activates your photos being emailed to you once you've got everything tested. 
Now click the back key on your phone. Click the snapshot checkbox. For timed intervals, your configuration is now complete. To configure the phone for picture motion detection, and you've already configured timed snapshots, then you don't need to configure anything else. Otherwise, scroll down to the picture motion detection section. There are two sliders at the bottom of the motion detection section. You'll have to play with these a little bit until you get the phone to trigger at the sensitivity that you want. For my phones, I have to set both sliders about 7 eighths of the way to the right to get an acceptable motion detection. Now you have your motion detection configured. To start the motion or timed photos, scroll up to the server section and click the Start Server button. Your phone should operate and you can test it by waiting for the triggers you've set up in the server configuration. Rig up something to install your phone onto. If it's going to be out in the weather, you can install it inside of a candle lantern from the dollar store. Most of these have adequate ventilation, and I use mine to look at my meters while I'm gone. Then I just Skype into the phone and I can see how my solar system is doing from anywhere in the world. Around the house, I get an email every time a person or critter comes wandering around. I use mine to look at my meters when I'm gone, and it's a great help. I can see it from anywhere in the world. I just Skype into my meters. And I can see how my solar system is doing. It's a great thing to keep my mind at ease when I'm not at home. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week or next month or whenever I get to it. I always answer questions whether posted publicly or privately. See you then.